morning's newspapers now and bring it again Badisha and Thomas who are joining us live hello again to you both all right we're gonna keep going with the entertainment theme we had just uh, before the break with Bethany we're gonna pick up with a story that uh, has been picked out by you Gar uh, Guardian Thomas in the Guardian on page 13 it's about James Corden leaving the late 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 show that's right. So comedian, co-creator of Gavin and Stacey, James Corden's leaving the US late, late show on CBS after a run of around 10 years. He started in 2015. He'll be finishing up next year, just slightly shorter than the tenure of his predecessor, Craig Ferguson. Now, all sorts of reasons are being touted as to why he's leaving the show. Partly, he might want to focus on a movie career. Also, rumours that he's missing the UK. And also, I imagine it must be just really tiring to host a big budget late night show like that every single single weekday. More interesting part, I think, for, for me is, is what this says about television in general, particularly US late night TV in, in, in the USA is just huge and has a very long standing tradition. But of course, dragging in audiences now a fraction of the size of what it once did. And that was James Corden's big success, really, was managing to take a show that was on air very late at night, actually very early in the morning on the Late Late Show for CBS, I think sort of 1 or one thirty in the morning it started up. But where he found huge success was online. The Late Late Show a YouTube channel has 10 billion views. His Carpool Karaoke format, which is very successful and then subsequently picked up by Apple. His show with Adele, a Carpool Karaoke with Adele, 250 million viewers on YouTube. One Direction, 189 million. And I wonder, I just suppose, as uh, you know, late night in the USA and television in general is going through this real transition period, declining number of people watching. And yet, of course, it still feels as if like television has an important part of our lives. The BBC Three is back on air and some of the directors and commissioners involved in that trying to move towards what I think might be described as a hybrid model. All of us are really enjoying up partly out of, uh, you know, the, the, the pandemic, the kind of flexibility of streaming online, watching when we want to. But also, of course, there's some things, sort of some sort of collective experience and watching television, um, uh, you know, at the time that it comes on on BBC One or whatever channel it is, if you look at Derry Girls on Channel 4, Line of Duty uh, on the BBC, those shows brought in millions of viewers to watch at a particular time of the evening. So I think what we're probably moving towards is this kind of hybrid model. Um, now, James Corden will come back to the UK, whether he may come back to the UK, whether he tries to sort of re-begin or start, start a sort of a fresh career in movies here in the UK, or just is based here and, and, and travels across the Atlantic to try to pick up some of the huge amount of fame and celebrity that he's garnered now in the USA. That remains to be seen. It certainly does. And I added those extra lates because it is on really late, that show. Um, just to let you know why I said that. Alright, let's move on to uh, one of your stories, Vidisha. This is in the Sun, the inside page. I'll let uh, I have my director pull up the headline for us so we can see this before I say it. There we go. Kiss and makeup. This is a virtual snogging kit. You're already shaking your head, Badisha. <laughs> it's, it's so gross what I'm about to say. And I apologise to anyone who's currently having slightly, like, runny eggs on muffins oh, right now. Man. So boffins at a university have figured out a way to get you to put on a virtual reality headset and then they send sound waves into your mouth so that it can replicate the feeling of snogging someone. And they've also figured out a way to get you to feel the sensations of brushing against cobwebs and raindrops falling on your lips and sort of weird toothache and other gross stuff. So it's all kind of disgusting. It sounds very, very unromantic and also, gotta be frank, no judgment. It's a little bit sad, yeah, I mean but... They're working on it. I mean, sad, yeah, sad perhaps, but it does feel a little like that film Ready Player One, if you remember that one, guys, where you had, like, the bodysuits and you could feel everything that was happening in the game. Thomas? It feels a little bit like, what's that line in Jurassic Park? Scientists need to stop asking whether they can and, and start whether asking they whether they should. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and should they? Oh, no, no, absolutely not. No, I think we're unanimous on this. This is a terrible idea. And actually, you know, there, there are courts for this kind of thing. More needs to be done. As, as a society, we need to object to this kind of... I mean, there's so many great ways that science could be used, and this is absolutely none of them. No, it really isn't. And uh, we won't make any references to what's going on in Parliament right now. All right, let's move on to page six of The Times, uh, if we can. Uh, Thomas, this is another one of your stories. Let's bring up the headline for our viewers to have a look at, page... 
six of the inside pages of the Times, I think we've got here. This is a longer life with Oscar, um, saying that Oscar winners uh, don't receive a cash prize, but they do get life, uh, years added to their life. Just tell us what this is all about, Thomas. Well, so it's this classic case of, of correlation is not causation from the time. So they're reporting uh, investigations from the University of Toronto that says that Oscar winners have a life expectancy that's about three and a half to four years uh, longer than us mere mortals. But of course, it's, you know, it's not because you win an Oscar that you have a longer life expectancy. It's because the type of people who win Oscars are probably rich and famous, can afford all the best healthcare and things. Although maybe I'm wrong. Maybe when you pick up that gold Oscar, you have a new lease on life. Maybe it's because they're all using those touchy suits. You have an increased determination to tell people that you've won an Oscar and you need three more, half more years of your life to tell people, I've won an Oscar, you know, that might be more likely. Was it George Burns that said he lived to like 96 by eating bacon and, uh, I don't know, drinking whiskey. He won an Oscar, didn't he, I think? Anyway, that's a plenty enough of that from both of you. Thank you very much, Padisha. Thomas, have a wonderful weekend. Lovely to see you both, and we'll see you again very, very soon. All right, well, plenty more to come on Sky News Breakfast, and thankfully none of it's to do with touchy-feely VR suits. We will, though, be talking, of course, about allegations coming out of Westminster that a Conservative MP watched pornography on his mobile phone while in the House of Commons. Now, uh, MP and Minister for Safeguarding told this programme in just the last couple of hours that if the claims against Neil Parrish are substantiated, he has no place in Parliament. We'll be getting more reaction to that throughout the day here on Sky News. Do stay with us. More to come just after the break.